Hey guys, welcome back to All on Law. Uh, this is a microbiology lecture, and today I'm going to talk about the pathophysiology of the pathophysiology of Ebola virus disease. Ebola virus disease. So this Ebola virus causes severe hemorrhagic shock and multi-organ failure. So there has what you call recently there has been an epidemic of this in the countries of South Africa like um, Guinea, Liberia and some parts of Nigeria, right? So in this video we're going to talk about the pathophysiology how this Ebola virus affects and causes multi-organ failure. So to understand this, first you should know that the Ebola comes from the family, the phyloviridae or phyloviruses. The two important viruses that are that comes from this family, one is Ebola, and another one is Marburg. Okay. So we talk about the Ebola. Ebola has a different what you call five different. Uh, types of viruses that can cause this Ebola disease, virus disease. One is the what you call the Ebola virus. Ebola virus. Okay. And th remember, this Ebola virus, as also known as a Zara virus, Zara Ebola virus, Zara Ebola virus, because Zara is a place what you call in the uh, Republic of Congo. Okay. And that's why it's known as a Zaire Ebola virus also sometimes. Okay. And the other one we have is Bandibgyo. Bandibgyo virus, Ebola virus. Okay. Then we have what you call Sudan virus. Okay. Then Thai forest. Thai forest virus and another one is Reston virus. This Reston virus is what you call Ebola virus. It's found in Philippines. Okay, it's found in the Philippines and China. And China. Okay. So what's the peculiarity of this virus, Ebola virus? Ebola virus is what you call the uh, RNA negative sense RNA, right? Reg RNA virus. So what it does. It affects what you call, it replicates efficiently, uh, producing what you call large number of viruses and causing widespread necrosis in the parenchymal cells of the liver, lung, lymph node, spleen, and platelets. Okay. This Ebola virus, let me write EV, has what you call affection to three important what you call cells one is the endothelial cells second one we have the mononuclear phagocytes and another one is hepatocytes they love to attack these cells okay now let me explain you the diagram for example if this is a virus there's Ebola virus. It's a cylindrical in shape, okay? I'm just drawing to explain you. When it comes and affects what you call, it gets into the monocyte. If this is a monocyte, okay? It gets into it, right? And gets and replicate very fast inside the monocyte. Along with the reproduction of this, what it does, it produces a glycoprotein known as the Ebola virus. Ebola virus glycoprotein. Let me draw the shape of this as like this. Okay, let's call it the Ebola virus glycoprotein. The Ebola virus glycoprotein it does two things. Okay, the one thing is it produces a trimeric complex, trimeric complex, and another one is it produces what you call uh, the dimeric protein 
dimeric protein. This trimeric complex, what it does, it helps the Ebola virus to get what you call attached to the endothelial cells of blood vessels. If these are the endothelial cells, it helps, it means it acts as a glue to what you call this Ebola virus and causes what you call attachment, firm attachment to this endothelial cells and causes this rupture and bleeding and so on, causes an even necrosis also. And the dimeric protein here, what it does, it, whenever you remember, whenever there's an, any infection, the neutrophils come, right? So the, what it does, the dimeric protein, it interferes the signaling of neutrophils. Interferes the signals, signaling of what you call um, neutrophils. This is a neutrophil, okay? Right, neutrophil. So what happens when there is an interference in the signaling, the, nu the neutrophils will come to the place where there is Ebola virus, but what it does, it, what it, does it won't kill the uh, virus, it just keep looking at the virus and as there is a no signal of killing, no phagocytosis, then it will move away from the site, okay? And the, this dimeric protein, what it does, it makes what you call this uh, it uses this neutrophil as a vehicle for the transport of the Ebola virus to different parts of the body. So the Ebola virus will make will sit on this what you call um, neutrophil, and they will travel to different parts of the body. Like it goes to the liver, it goes to the spleen, it goes to the lungs, and so on, and goes and destroys. And another one function of this dimeric protein or a glycoprotein is that it causes release of the cytokines. That produces a fever and inflammation, signs of inflammation, cytokines, and cytokines, especially what you call TNF alpha, TNF alpha, IL6 and 8. Okay, IL8. Remember, and this what you call the glycoprotein. It does, and one more thing that the cell integrity it disrupts the cell integrity by reducing the integrins, reducing the integrins. So what happens cell to cell att att um, attachment is uh, disrupted, so the cells get detached and leads to what coagulopathy. Wherever they attack, it leads to coagulopathy. Remember. So this is how exactly this virus acts, guys. Okay. So I'm sure you got an idea of how this Ebola virus acts and causes the uh, destruction of what you call the different cells. Okay. Remember, the platelet dysfunction is really very important. Okay. It causes the platelet dysfunction and abnormalities in a coagulation parameters, okay? Like, uh, as I said, platelet discussion, um, dysfunction, okay? And damage to the vascular endothelium, as we discussed, and the fibrin split products, okay? And that leads to hemorrhagic shock, hemorrhagic fever, and DIC, that is the disseminated intravascular coagulation, and eventually the coma and the death. It has a 50 to 90% of fatal rate, remember, okay, guys? So this is about the pathophysiology of Ebola virus. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do share and thumb up. Thank you.